أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تكاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله كونوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فكد فاذا فوضا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وإن خير الحدي حدي محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد يا إخوة المسلمين يا عباد الله All thanks and praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Indeed, we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek His mercy, His blessings, and we beg for His forgiveness. I testify to the fact that there's absolutely no deity, no one worthy of any deification except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for He's indeed alone and has no partners, and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever He left astray, none can provide guidance to. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last and final messenger. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He was sent as a mercy, as a compassion to all of creation في يوم القيامة. قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لإلاف كريش إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُ رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَتْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسول الله الكريم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam The last time I was in this masjid by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we covered Surah Al-Ma'oon and the reason why we talk about Surat Al-Ma'oon is because of the current situation that we are faced with in terms of nominating a justice for the Supreme Court and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala profoundly. And that is one of the beauty of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. It is not an ancient text. It's a virtual text. It's a text that you will see that evolves and it's, it's ahead of its time. And because of Surah Al-Ma'oon, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Rasulullah sallallahu in sharp, unintelligent language to go to the status quo, the elitists of, the, of that time, the Quraysh, and tell them they're, they're spinning the truth. They're mukathib. They're liars that they know what the truth is, but they spin it that we see every time we look at the 24-hour newsreel, we see how the truth is being spinned into lies that they call it now fake news. But before I go to this surah, Surah Al-Quraysh, and this surah I chose because of the current situation that we are faced with globally as an ummah. But before we talk about Surah Al-Quraysh, I must go to the surah before it, Surah Al-Fil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was in his 40s, 40 plus, about an incident that happened 50 days before the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving comfort to Rasulullah because of what he's been going through 
consoling him and saying to him, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. Ya Rasulullah, don't worry. Didn't you see? And he's addressing the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost in second person language directly. And he's saying to Rasulullah, haven't you see how I dealt with them? This great empire, backed by the Byzantine Empire, the leader, Abraha, from Yemen is coming to destroy this house, this place of foundation that was laid by Ibrahim alayhi salam, that I've destroyed them in the most humiliating fashion, that I've used the weakest of the creation, the birds, alam tara kayfa, how I dealt with them and not what I did with them. And they're coming with this kaida, this secret plan, a plan of strategy that they come and say, we are saviors, we come to liberate you. But it's not so. They have ulterior motives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving comfort to Rasulullah that I've took care of them. I've took care of them so much so that nobody messed with Quraysh after that. But it's interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Fil is talking, it's all about the Quraysh and the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but never mentioned the name Quraysh in Surah Al-Fil. But now in this surah, he's beginning the surah, surah Li ilafi Quraysh. Li ilafi Quraysh. And it's interesting, and this, every year I do the surah, the last 10 surah of the Mus'haf, and yesterday I'm looking at the surah, and this surah, it consists of 17 words. 17 words, 73 letters, and four ayats. There's only one other surah in the Mus'haf that has sheer four ayah, is Surah Al-Ikhlas. And it's interesting, this surah, it is a surah of the message of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabba hadha al-bayt. It is that surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you should desist from everything that you're doing and worship this, the Lord of this house. And it's interesting, it's 17 words. And it's just an interesting note that I just observed yesterday that it is 17 rata of obligatory prayer. So in this surah, it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking every word to appeal to you to come to worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that was an interesting note to be noted. You know, and, and, and this is the beauty of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins by saying, لِإِلَافِ Quraysh, For the benefit of the Quraysh, for the appreciation of the Quraysh, for the love of the Quraysh. And we can go through historically how the Quraysh was appreciated. And I give the khutbah about Surah Al-Fil a couple of weeks ago in one masajid. And I got a phone call afterwards and they were asking me, that they would like to sit with me to know they have recorded khutbah, seven years I give, about the impending situation in Yemen. How do I know that information? You see, it's Yemen, what's happening today, it should be, it's very dear to us. Our heart should bleed for that. Because before I go to the surah, just some historical context, after the flood in Yemen, which was known as the Garden of Eden of the Middle East, in 450 CE, after the Great Flood, the people were forced to migrate. And they were forced to migrate, some of them migrated to the vicinity of Mecca, where they found the water, the Zamzam. A man that came from Yemen, his name was Uthayba ibn Kalam. Uthayba ibn Kalam was a very charismatic figure. He was able to gather the people together. He was very entrepreneurial, so he moved to create new business. Uthayb ibn Kalam, he had three sons. One of the prominent of the three sons, his name was Abdul Munaf. Abdul Munaf, he had four sons. One of the prominent of the four sons was Hashim, Mutallib, Abdul Shams, Naufal. The prominent of the four was Hashim. Hashim, he had a son. His name was Abdul Mutallib. Abdul Mutallib, he had a son. His name, many sons, one of them, the prominent of them, was Abdullah. Abdullah, he had a son, one son. His name was Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is why 
And I was explaining this in the meeting after they came, and I said, this is why I must speak about, this is the least we can do. I'm not concerned about the political situation, but I'm concerned as a human being about the humanitarian situation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this surah, لِإِلَافِ Quraysh, For the love of the Quraysh. And أَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبٍ Is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses أَلَّفَ It is immediate love. It is not a love that nurtured. That when he talks about the love of the... It, it, it's a love that takes a time to nurture. That for example, you called me, I do a favor for you. A month after you called me again, I do a favor. And I keep doing favors until you love me. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that word when he was talking about the companions. That the love grew over time. Allafa bayna kulub. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ilaf. It's an immediate love for the Quraysh. There's no distance in between, there's no favor. That the Quraysh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, blessed them with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed that vicinity with Ibrahim alayhi salam, that laid the foundation of Tawheed, that built that house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُوا إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَائِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَائِيلِ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed Quraysh that you will see in this surah with the luxury of trading to become one of the prominent tribes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest of blessing is the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim alayhi salam lift his hands. This is hundreds of years before Islam. And he's saying, وَبْأَسْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ibrahim is lifting his hands hundreds of years before Islam and say, Ya Allah, bless this nation with a prophet from among themselves that will teach them this kitab, that will show them the sign. They were blessed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for the appreciation of Quraysh, for the love of Quraysh, li'ilafi Quraysh. And the second ilaf, again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying ilaf again in the second ayah. The first ilaf, it's a general ilaf. The second ilaf is specific. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying ilafihim rihlata shita'i wa soy. This second ilaf is for emphasis. It's as if giving you this feeling that the language is trying to say, do you remember what I did for you? And I'm coming to you now. You remember how I helped you out? That this li, this lamb, is lamb of ta'leel. This lamb grammatically that begins the surah, it has to connect to something. What is this lamb connecting to? Is this lamb connecting to that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so loved the Quraysh that he destroyed an entire, an entire army to protect the Quraysh? And we can go down the list of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lamb, what is it connected to? That this lamb of ta'aleel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and in the Maghrib Salah, he would recite in the second rakah, Surah Al-Fil and Surah Al-Quraysh without the intercession of the Bismillah in between. Not because it's not two different ayah, surah, it's to show the strong connection between these two surahs. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so appreciative that for the love of the Quraysh, and we can all share that today, this love. And we say in this secular year that we are just about to complete, just about 82 hours left before the new year begins and we all somehow because we grew up in the west we grew up with this calendar subconsciously the, despite you follow the, the, the Islamic calendar our brain is set to this secular calendar and I ask myself and yourself what is your ilaf what is the appreciation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appreciate you so much. What do you appreciate back for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you know, recently I was reading a report, 
a scientific journal that the astronauts, when they go up to space, they can see the Australian outback clear from space. In 83 hours, they will be able to see Times Square clear as day of the celebration that we're about to witness when the ball drops. But curiously, they were not able to see the Amazon jungle. They were not able to see the Amazon jungle from space, and an inquiry began, and they begin some scientific, scientific expedition, and the satellite Aura, which is a satellite in space that is dedicated to study the chemistry of Earth. The astronauts came back, and after studying, what they found out was that the dust storm in the deserts. When you have a dust storm in the desert, you have 70 million tons of dust that gets blown into the atmosphere and travel over the ocean, and it goes into the Amazon jungle. And what they found out that this dust is the most, most potent fertilizer for the trees and the lusciousness of the Amazon, which is about 30, over 30,000 different species of plants. And what they found out, that these plants as they grow, it emits water through photosynthesis, something called respiration, that it emits water into the clouds, and it forms a river over the Amazon jungle, and you can fit 10 states of Texas in the Amazon jungle. So the river that is hovering in the cloud inhibits the astronaut to see the Amazon jungle. And what happened is that this body of water, it floats. They call it the flying river. It floats and it crashes into the Andes Mountains, which is the second largest peak in the world at 22,000 feet or four miles in elevation. When it crashes into the mountain, the water gushes down the Andes and it brings with it, erodes the rocks and it brings minerals into the water of the river of the Amazon. That minerals that it brings, it feeds a bacteria called diatome. This bacteria is four times skinnier than the human hair. This bacteria, they can see from space in the ocean, miles and miles of bacteria. The breath that you have just taken, my brother, comes from that bacteria. The breath that you just breathe, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, he did all of this so you can breathe. That bacteria is what gives you oxygen. That bacteria is what gives the human species oxygen because the Amazon itself uses up all the oxygen it produces. Hence, they say the Amazon is the lungs of the world. It is not in that way. It is through this entire amazing cycle. Now, the question goes, what happened to these bacteria? These bacteria, because they're their nutrients is from mineral, the, the, the body becomes shell-like. So what happened? As they die, they descend into the bed of the ocean. And that builds up after a while into miles and miles of thickness. And that eventually becomes the desert. Where the Sahara is, it was once an ocean. And that bacteria, the shell-like, is what is in the dust of the Sahara that gets blows back into the Amazon that feeds again, and you breed, and I breed. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. But it's interesting that last week, before I give this khutbah, I was making some lunch before going for the khutbah. And while I'm making some lunch, I said, I want to read some ayah of the Qur'an just randomly. So I went to Quran Explorer and I just scrolled. And you know, you scroll and it stops by itself. And Allah is my witness. And I was sharing this with my daughters. And it stopped at the 51st chapter of the Quran. 
And I know I want to talk about this. I want to use this because I find it amazing. And it brings me to the surah, Al-Dhariyati Zarwa. And I want you to listen to this surah and listen to what I just told you scientifically. And the Quran is ahead of its time in terms of science. What happens when science is able to prove something, it really brings light to the eye of the Quran. But the Quran was ahead of it. The Quran already proved it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Adhariyati Zarwa. And he swears. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath in the Quran, what is to follow that oath is colossal importance. It is very, very important for mankind, for the hidayah, for the reflection, for the contemplation of mankind. What is to follow this oath? So I want you to pay attention that he's taking not one oath. وَالذَّارِيَاتِ ذَرْوَ فَالْجَارِيَاتِ فَالْحَامِلَاتِ ذِكْرَ And he swears first that he takes an oath about the, uh, from the dust that blows things. He takes an oath on the dust that blows things. وَالذَّارِيَاتِ ذَرْوَ وَالْحَامِلَاتِ ذِكْرَ And he takes an oath by the clouds that carry a loaded weight. وَالْحَامِلَاتِ ذِكْرَ فَالْجَارِيَاتِ يُسْرَ and he's swearing again. He's swearing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing a third time and he's saying he's taking an oath from that which, say, which floats, not sail. If you look at all the translation of Quran, they would say, فَالْجَارِيَاتِ is that which sail. But because of science, within the context of what Allah is talking, it cannot be sail. Because sailing have friction. When I say sailing to you, you're thinking of a boat. And if you're thinking of a boat, then you're going against the tide, friction. There's, there's the treacherous of the sea. It can't be that. And this is the beauty of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. And beauty and the science and the Quran. The Quran is ahead of the science. The science have to catch up to the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَالْجَارِيَاتِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى It floats with ease. فَالْمُقَسِّمَاتِ أَمْرَى And he swear by that which distributes things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath by that with amara, which distribute things. Whether it could be the angel that does just distribute what? What he's about to say next. Now everything changes in the, in the, in the, in the Quran. Remember, he says, وَالذَّارِيَاتِ فَالْحَامِلَاتِ فَالْجَارِيَاتِ فَالْمُقَسِّمَاتِ And then what happened? There's no fa here. It's inna. What you are promised, he will give to you. This lamb, Sadiq, is true, sure, truthful. This lamb is a lamb to emphasize for sure what he promises you, he will give to you. What he's giving to you, that breath. We don't know. That is why our brother, Ma'ashallah, he have not just taken shahada. The purest of men in this masjid. The purest of men, and this is one of the beauty of, of, of Islam. The purest of men, if any one of us die here, if al maut comes, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna tu'aduna la sadiq, that no more breath for you, and a breath for you, and no more breath for you, and tomorrow your breath will stop, and next week no more breath for you. But this brother, alhamdulillah, if he dies now, he dies the purest among us. Because he have just taken the shahada and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has erased every transgression, every wrongdoing from him. That inshallah, my brother, before you leave, when the salah is finished, I appeal to you one thing. That you are a ni'mah for this ummah, for this two billion Muslims around the world today. 
were faced with a lot of difficulties. An entire nation of Yemen is about at the brink of starvation. And this is the beauty of Islam, that the dua of the believer is the weapon of the believer. We pray and we beg of you today to make dua for every Muslim that are suffering in every parts of the world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your dua. Ameen, Ya Rabbul Alameen. That is my appeal to you. And that should be the appeal of everyone sitting here to you, our brother. And this is what Islam is about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Li Quraysh. That this rihla, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Quraysh, that they're able to travel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rihla. He didn't say, suffer, where you travel for a long distance, or saha, where you travel for luxury, or, 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 or nafara, where you travel to fight. He used a specific word, he says, Rehla. So if you go on Liberty Avenue or Rockaway Boulevard, or you go on the Van Wyck, and you see a truck laden with goods, that's Rehla. That they're able to travel for trading. And he says, Ilafihim Rehlatash Shita'i Wasoif. Where are they traveling to? They're traveling in the winter to Yemen. And in the summer to Syria. And look at, look at the, 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 the order. You see, grammatically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said summer and winter. He could have switched it and it still sound grammatically. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the, 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 the utmost appreciation for this nation. That he's saying that winter is associated with what? Difficulties. Harshness of trading. That he's putting that force to remove it. He doesn't want them even to wa worry for next second. I want to give them this Bashara, this news, that they're able to travel in the winter when it's hot in Yemen. And when it's cool, they travel in the summer. In Shita Iwasolf, two times a year. And you know, they were able to travel without any, you know, the, the, the order of the day of traveling as a, as a merchant. If you travel in the desert, what the robbers does is they wait for you. And they take enough for them and they let you with the rest so you can continue business. They're not stupid. These are very intelligent people. They will take enough for themselves and leave you so you can go and trade and come back. And they will wait for you next year. Nobody messed with Quraysh after what happened in Surah Al-Fil. Nobody messed with them. You know, this type of trading I call modern day taxation. This is what we do here. The government let you work. And you work, you pay your mortgage, you pay your car bill, and, and they leave you with enough to do that. They take some in April, and they send you back to work. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, لِإِلَافِ Quraysh, إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ that all this I've done for Quraysh. All this I've done for Quraysh. Look what's happening in the world today with this nation that I remind them with the surah preceded this. Alam tara, I say to the Iranian. Didn't you see how Allah dealt with those people? I say to the Saudis, Alam tara. Didn't you see? I say to the leaders of Syria, Alam Tara, did you see how Allah dealt with them? I say to every tyrannical ruler, every egotistical ruler, whether it's a micro level in the masajid or it's a macro level as a, as a, as a, a person that is running the state, I say to all of them, Alam tara. Because you know when Allah takes the oath and he gives the ayah and the oath he's taking, look how much science he gives to us in this oath. But it's not about the science. Those are, those are secondary things to Allah. This is not a book of science. It's a book of guidance. But what he wants you to know, 
what he will give you, he promised you, you will get it. And you know what he says next? Wa inna, wa inna dina. The next ayah he says that this day of Yom al Qiyamah, it is a day that is promised, that is so sure that like the breath that you have just taken. No denial. I say no denial to the leader of Syria and Yemen and Saudi and Iraq and, and all these places and even in our society. This day of deen is as sure as the breath Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it, one of the beauty of this surah, you know, I love this short surah, the Mus'haf, because you can get to complete an entire surah in the khutbah. It's not an ayah. So when you leave, inshallah, you must leave knowing this surah, looking at this surah with a different light. When you stand up this afternoon and you read your Maghrib Salah and you say, Li'ilafi Quraysh. And you reflect for the appreciation Allah has for me. What appreciation I have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ilafihim rihlat al shita'i wa saif. Fal ya'budu, yes, the Quraysh that he let them travel to Syria and Yemen and they became one of the most prominent wealthy tribe. What about you? Did you travel? 362 days already gone. Every day safe to your job. And Allah give you risk. Stand in these 83 hours. Choose them wisely at night and give appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Worship the Lord of this house. After all of this is to bring you to the worship of the Lord of this house. فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ That remember, Ya Quraysh. Remember, Ya Shafiq. That فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ أَلَّذِي أَتْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ That he protected you against hunger. He put hunger first. In Surah Al-Imran, he put fear first. Look at, the, look at the preciseness of words of this kitab. That when Allah is talking about the battle of the companions and Rasulullah, He put fear first. Because in battle, what is your concern? It is fear. So He removes the fear first. And then He talks about hunger. But in this time of Quraysh, He is saying that Quraysh, you're living in a place where not a blade of grass grows. That I protect you against hunger, Ya Quraysh. And when Abraha was coming, this lamb of Ta'leel is linked now to the previous surah. When Abraha was coming to destroy you, that you have never seen an army with such majestic animals that are coming to trample. They just give up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I protect you against fear. Come back to the ayah, Rabba Hazal Bayt. I appeal to myself and all of you that reflect upon this because you know it's interesting one of our old brothers passed away and it seems like that that clock is slow or, or yeah, is the clock slow I, I have 150 so inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imbibe in your hearts that after this surah to Quraysh that when we stand to Allah and when we recite this surah, we ask for ourselves, Ma qadarullahu haqqa qadri, inna Allah laqawiyun aziz. Do we give the right measure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we worship Allah as He ought to be worshipped? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our hearts to the understanding of His kitab and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, هو الذي لا إله إلا هو المالك القدوس السلام المؤمن المحيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله سبحان الله إما يشركون 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's mighty, He's majestic, He's magnificent. He's warabbaka takabbir. He is above all which the associates unto him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray that he put peace in our hearts, put peace in this world that we're living in. You know, it's interesting that one of our brother passed away and I was at the cover and I'm looking at the burial and I said to myself, you know, it all ends the way it begins when you think about it that I'm looking that the grave was dig and it was a rainy day so they were, had to bring the pump to pump the water out to put the body into the into the cupboard I'm standing there and I'm reflecting upon an ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran he says that he have created you, you sawilkum fil arham, from the womb of your mother, in three layers of darkness. Three layers of darkness. You, as a fetus, is submerged in this amniotic fluid and covered by the uterus lining and covered by the skin, the dermis of your mom. Three layers of darkness. And I'm looking at the body going in onto the ground. And I'm saying, it is exactly three layers of darkness we're going back to. It is that coffin. It is that box that you put in. And it's the dirt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the dirt that will cover you, that three layers of darkness. Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum. La ta'lamuna shayya wa ja'ala lakum as-sam'a wal absara wal af'ida la'allakum tashkurun subhanallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us that he have originated you he brought you forth from the womb of your mother la ta'lamuna shayya when you were a blank slate you are a blank page. You had nothing. You know nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمَعَ And He gives you hearing. And preciseness of Quran again, embryology, if you study the science of embryology, you find that hearing is what created first before sight. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَةِ That you can hear first before you can see. You can hear the regurgitation of the womb of your mother when you're in there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He made you to hear that if your mom listened to rock music, that would affect you because you can hear. If she listened to the Qur'an, the soothing melody of the Qur'an, it will affect that child also. We wonder what, why so many of our children, they're killing without any, any, any justification of killing. From Sandy Hook to now, this day, my dear brothers, this day, this mighty nation with the most powerful military, from Sandy Hook killing of 26 people, which is just a few days ago, make six years. From then to now, they had 1,876 shooting after that, mass shooting. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He give hearing first. And hearing is the most powerful form of learning. And testimony to that is Rasulullah has learned the entire Quran without knowing how to read. It is just listening. A child knows an entire language before they know how to read. Listening. I'm not saying hearing because we hear things. I want you to listen. Listen is active. That he says that he bless you with hearing and bless you with sight. And I'm looking at this body in the cover. And I said the first thing he bless you with is the last thing he allow you to use that you will hear when the footstep leaves. You will hear, and you will hear the question in the cover. You will hear it. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying 
that in these days of blessing, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bless, continue the blessing of this Ummah to Rasulullah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the difficulty of this Ummah to Rasulullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you. Bless your family. Bless our brothers and sisters. Bless our youths. Bless our children who are studying in universities all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us in this path of this path of deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless those who have passed away with ease in their qabr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our dua and accept our salah. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama salaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min a'zaab al qabr wa a'udhu bika min fitnati masih al-dajjal wa a'udhu bika min fitnati mahya wal mamat. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ma'asi wal magram. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وآفنا في من نعفيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا في ما أعطيت وكنا شر ما قديت وإن تقدي ولا يقدع عليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك عباد الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر